Bob. Welcome back to our podcast. Today, we're diving into a topic that's crucial for everyone, time management. How are you doing today? Hey, Alice, I'm doing great. Thanks. Time management is definitely a big one. It's something I think we all struggle with at some point. Where do we start? Well, I think a good place to start is by defining what time management actually means. To me, it's all about organizing and planning how to divide your time between different activities. What about you? I agree. It's about making sure that you use your time efficiently so that you can accomplish your goals. But it's also about balance, making sure you're not just productive, but also taking care of yourself. Absolutely. It's not just about cramming as much as you can into your day. It's about making sure that what you're doing is meaningful and effective. So let's start with some basics. What do you think are the biggest challenges people face when it comes to managing their time? I'd say one of the biggest challenges is procrastination. It's so easy to put things off, especially if they're difficult or unpleasant. Another big one is distractions. With smartphones and social media, it's so easy to get sidetracked. Oh, totally. I can't count the number of times I've sat down to work and then found myself scrolling through Instagram without even realizing it. I think another challenge is not having a clear plan. When you don't know what you need to do, it's easy to waste time. Right, and sometimes it's not just about not having a plan, but also about having unrealistic expectations. We try to do too much and then get discouraged when we can't get it all done. That's a great point, so let's talk solutions. How do you tackle procrastination? For me, breaking tasks into smaller, manageable pieces really helps. Instead of thinking about an entire project, I focus on one step at a time. And setting deadlines is crucial. Even if they're self-imposed, they give you something to work towards. I love that. I also find that just getting started can be the hardest part. I try to use the two-minute rule where if something takes less than two minutes, I do it right away. It helps build momentum. That's a good one. I also use time blocking. I set aside specific times for specific tasks and try to stick to that schedule as much as possible. It creates a routine and makes it easier to focus. Time blocking is amazing. I've started doing that too, and it's made a huge difference. What about dealing with distractions? I think the first step is recognizing what your biggest distractions are. For me, it's definitely my phone. So I use apps that limit my screen time or block certain apps during work hours. I also try to create a dedicated workspace that's free from distractions. That's smart. I've found that setting boundaries with others is important too. Letting people know when you're working and not to disturb you can help a lot. And sometimes, just a good pair of noise-canceling headphones can make a world of difference. Absolutely. Now let's talk about planning. How do you go about setting up your day or week? I like to start with a weekly overview. I write down all the things I need to accomplish and then break them down into daily tasks. Each evening, I review my list for the next day and make adjustments if needed. It helps me stay organized and prioritize what's most important. That's a solid approach. I do something similar, but I also like to set long-term goals and then work backwards. I break them down into monthly, weekly, and then daily tasks. It helps me see the bigger picture and, and stay motivated. Long-term goals are key. They give you something to strive for and help you stay focused. How do you make sure you're not overloading yourself? That's a tough one. I think it comes down to being realistic about what you can achieve in a day. I try to limit my to-do list to the top three most important tasks. Anything beyond that is a bonus. It helps me stay focused and avoid feeling overwhelmed. That's a good strategy. I also try to be mindful of my energy levels. I tackle the most challenging tasks when I'm at my peak energy, usually in the morning, and leave the less demanding tasks for later in the day. Managing energy is so important, and taking breaks is crucial too. It might seem counterintuitive, but stepping away from work can actually boost productivity. Do you follow any specific methods for taking breaks? Yes, I'm a big fan of the Pomodoro technique. I work for 25 minutes, then take a five minute break. After four cycles, I take a longer break, like 15, 30 minutes. It keeps me fresh and prevents burnout. Pomodoro is great. I use it too, but sometimes I adjust the timing based on the task. For really intensive work, I might do longer blocks of focused time followed by longer breaks. That's a good point. It's all about finding what works best for you. One thing I've been trying to get better at is saying no. It's so easy to take on too much and then end up stressed and stretched too thin. Saying no is a skill in itself. It's important to recognize your limits and not overcommit. 
It's okay to set boundaries and prioritize your own well-being. Exactly. And delegation is another aspect. If there are tasks that others can handle, it's okay to delegate. It frees up your time for things that require your specific attention and skills. Definitely. Delegation is a big part of effective time management, especially in a work setting. What about tools? Do you use any specific apps or tools to help manage your time? Yes, I use a combination of digital and analog tools. For digital, I love Trello for project management and Google Calendar for scheduling. I also use a physical planner because there's something satisfying about writing things down and checking them off. I'm the same way. I use Asana for managing tasks and projects, and my calendar is crucial for keeping track of appointments and deadlines. I also use a simple notebook for daily to-do lists and notes. It's all about finding the right mix of tools that work for you. Do you have any tips for staying motivated and avoiding burnout? For me, it's about finding balance. Making sure I'm not just working all the time, but also making time for things I enjoy. Exercise, hobbies, and spending time with loved ones are all important. And recognizing when I need a break and taking it without guilt. That's so important. Self-care is a huge part of time management. If you're not taking care of yourself, you won't be able to perform at your best. I also find that setting aside time for reflection and planning helps me stay on track and motivated. Reflection is key. Taking time to review what's working and what's not and making adjustments as needed. It's a continuous process. Absolutely. And celebrating small wins along the way helps too. It keeps you motivated and reminds you of the progress you're making. For sure. It's all about progress, not perfection. Well, this has been a great conversation, Alice. I think we've covered a lot of ground on time management. Absolutely, Bob. I think there are still a lot of nuances we can explore about time management. For example, let's talk about the role of habits and routines in managing time effectively. How do you incorporate habits into your daily routine? Habits are the backbone of effective time management. Once something becomes a habit, you don't have to spend mental energy deciding whether or not to do it. You just do it. I try to build habits by starting small and being consistent. For example, I started a habit of planning my day the night before. It only takes a few minutes, but it sets me up for success the next day. That's a great habit. I found that having a morning routine helps me start the day on the right foot. I wake up, do some light exercise, meditate for a few minutes, and then have a healthy breakfast. It's a way to set a positive tone for the day. Morning routines are powerful. They can help you gain momentum for the rest of the day. I also have an evening routine where I review what I accomplished during the day and plan for the next. It helps me wind down and feel prepared. That's a good point. Evening routines can be just as important as morning ones. Let's dive a bit deeper into goal setting. How do you approach setting goals both short-term and long-term? For me, goal setting starts with a clear vision of what I want to achieve. I set long-term goals first, then break them down into smaller, more manageable, short-term goals. I use the SMART criteria, making sure my goals are specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-bound. This framework helps me create goals that are clear and actionable. The SMART criteria is a fantastic framework. I use it too. I also like to set quarterly goals. It's a good time frame for making significant progress without feeling too far off. I break these down into monthly and weekly goals and then daily tasks. It keeps me focused and on track. Quarterly goals are a great idea. They provide a balance between long-term vision and short-term action. Do you have any strategies for staying accountable to your goals? Accountability is crucial. I find that sharing my goals with someone else helps. It could be a friend, a family member, or even a mentor. Just knowing that someone else is aware of what I'm trying to achieve keeps me motivated. I also use accountability groups where we check in with each other regularly. Accountability partners can make a big difference. I've found that journaling helps me stay accountable too. Writing down my goals, tracking my progress, and reflecting on what I've done keeps me engaged and focused. Journaling is a great tool. It's a way to have a conversation with yourself and stay mindful of your progress. Another topic that often comes up in time management is the importance of delegation and outsourcing. How do you approach this? Delegation is essential, especially when you're working in a team or managing multiple projects. I try to delegate tasks that others can do better or faster than I can. It frees up my time to focus on high priority tasks that require my specific skills. I also believe in empowering others by giving them responsibility and trust. 
Empowering others is key. It not only helps you manage your time better, but also helps others grow and develop their skills. In terms of outsourcing, I think it's about recognizing when your time is better spent on strategic activities rather than operational ones. For example, hiring a virtual assistant for administrative tasks can be a game changer. Absolutely. Outsourcing can be a smart move for both personal and professional tasks. It's about investing in resources that help you maximize your efficiency and effectiveness. Speaking of which, how do you manage work-life balance while staying productive? Work-life balance is a tough one, but it's so important. I try to set clear boundaries between work and personal time. For example, I don't check work emails after a certain hour in the evening. I also make sure to schedule time for activities that I enjoy and that help me recharge, like spending time with family, exercising, and pursuing hobbies. Setting boundaries is crucial. I also try to disconnect from work completely during my personal time. It's about being fully present in whatever you're doing. I've found that scheduling downtime and treating it as important as work time helps a lot. It ensures that you get the rest and relaxation you need. That's a great approach. And it's also important to be flexible. Sometimes things don't go as planned, and that's okay. Being adaptable and knowing how to adjust your schedule without feeling stressed is a valuable skill. Flexibility is indeed important. Rigidity can lead to frustration, especially when unexpected things come up. Being able to pivot and reassess your priorities in real time is a part of effective time management. Have you ever tried mindfulness or meditation as a part of your routine? Yes, I incorporate mindfulness and meditation into my routine. It helps me stay grounded and focused. Even just a few minutes of deep breathing or a short meditation session can clear my mind and reduce stress. It's a great way to reset and refocus. Mindfulness is powerful. I practice it too, especially during busy days. It helps me stay calm and maintain a clear perspective. Another technique I've found helpful is practicing gratitude. It shifts my focus from what's stressing me out to what I'm thankful for, which can be very grounding. Practicing gratitude is such a positive habit. It's a great reminder of the good things in life, which can often be overshadowed by stress and busyness. Do you have any final tips for our listeners on mastering time management? I'd say, Start small and be consistent. Building good habits takes time, but they pay off in the long run. Don't be too hard on yourself if things don't go as planned. Learn from your experiences and keep adjusting. And remember, time management is not just about being productive, but also about creating a fulfilling and balanced life. Those are great tips, Bob. I'd add that it's important to regularly review and reflect on your time management strategies. What works today might not work tomorrow, and that's okay. Keep experimenting and find what works best for you. And always make time for self-care and activities that bring you joy. Well said, Alice. This has been a fantastic discussion. Absolutely, Bob. I think one area we haven't touched on yet is the impact of technology on time management. How do you leverage technology to help manage your time more effectively? Technology can be both a blessing and a curse when it comes to time management. On one hand, there are so many tools and apps designed to help us stay organized and productive. On the other hand, technology can also be a major source of distraction. Personally, I try to leverage technology by using productivity apps like Trello, Asana, and Evernote. These help track of tasks, set reminders, and collaborate with others. I totally agree. Productivity apps are fantastic for keeping everything organized. One tool that I find incredibly useful is Rescue Time. It tracks how I spend my time on the computer and provides detailed reports on my productivity levels. It's a great way to identify time sinks and make adjustments. Rescue Time is great for self-awareness. Another tool I've found helpful is Focus Will. It provides music design to improve concentration and productivity. It's amazing how the right kind of background music can enhance focus. That's a cool tool. I've also started using Habitica. It turns your to-do list into a game, which makes completing tasks a lot more fun and rewarding. You can earn points and rewards for completing tasks, which adds a bit of extra motivation. Gamification is a powerful motivator. I've heard good things about Habitica. It's all about finding what keeps you motivated and engaged. Speaking of which, how do you handle the constant barrage of emails and messages? They can be such a time drain. Emails and messages can definitely be overwhelming. I try to limit how often I check them. 
Instead of constantly monitoring my inbox, I set specific times during the day to check and respond to emails. I also use filters and labels to prioritize important messages and keep my inbox organized. That's a smart strategy. I do something similar with email batching. I check my emails in batches a few times a day, rather than reacting to each one as it comes in. It helps me stay focused on my tasks without constant interruptions. I also use tools like Unroll Me to unsubscribe from unwanted newsletters and clean up my inbox. Email batching is definitely effective. Another tip I've found useful is setting expectations with colleagues and clients about response times. Letting people know when you'll be available to respond to emails can help manage their expectations and reduce pressure on you to reply immediately. Communication is key. Setting expectations helps a lot. How do you manage your time when it comes to meetings? They can easily eat up a large part of the day if not managed well. Meetings can be a huge time sink if they're not managed properly. I try to make sure every meeting has a clear agenda and purpose. If a meeting isn't necessary, I suggest handling the issue via email or a quick phone call instead. I also block out meeting-free times in my calendar to ensure I have uninterrupted time to focus on deep work. Meeting-free blocks are a great idea. I also try to keep meetings as short as possible. Instead of defaulting to an hour, I aim for 30 minutes or even 15 minute check-ins. Keeping meetings focused and to the point helps save a lot of time. Agreed. Short, focused meetings are much more efficient, and following up with clear action items and deadlines ensures that meetings lead to tangible results rather than just more talking. Absolutely. Let's talk about one more aspect of time management, dealing with unexpected events and emergencies. How do you handle those without derailing your entire schedule? Flexibility is crucial here. I try to build some buffer time into my schedule to account for unexpected events. This way, if something urgent comes up, I have some leeway without completely disrupting my plans. It's also important to stay calm and prioritize. Assess the situation, decide what's most critical, and adjust your schedule accordingly. Buffer time is a lifesaver. I also find that having a well-organized task list helps. When an emergency arises, I can quickly see what can be postponed or delegated. And like you said, staying calm is key. Panicking only wastes more time. Exactly. It's all about being prepared and staying flexible. Do you have any final thoughts or tips for our listeners on mastering time management? I'd say, remember that time management is a skill that takes practice. Don't get discouraged if you don't get it right all the time. Keep experimenting with different techniques and find what works best for you. And most importantly, Make sure your time management efforts align with your personal and professional goals. It's about creating a balanced and fulfilling life, not just being productive. Questions and answers related to the topic of time management. What is time management? Time management is the process of organizing and planning how to divide your time between specific activities to work more efficiently and effectively. Why is time management important? Time management is important because it helps you maximize productivity, reduce stress, and achieve your goals more efficiently. What are common challenges in time management? Common challenges include procrastination, distractions, lack of clear goals, unrealistic expectations, and poor planning. How can you overcome procrastination? Overcoming procrastination can be achieved by breaking tasks into smaller steps, setting deadlines, using the two-minute rule, and starting with the easiest part of the task. What is the Pomodoro Technique? The Pomodoro Technique is a time management method where you work for 25 minutes and then take a five minute break. After four cycles, you take a longer break of 15, 30 minutes. How does time blocking help with time management? Time blocking helps by allocating specific time slots for different tasks, creating a structured schedule that reduces the likelihood of distractions and multitasking. What is the role of habits in time management? Habits play a crucial role in time management as they automate routine tasks, reduce decision fatigue, and help maintain consistency in your daily schedule. How do you set effective goals? Effective goals can be set using the SMART criteria, specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-bound. What are the benefits of a morning routine? A morning routine helps set a positive tone for the day, increases productivity, and ensures that important tasks are addressed first. How can you manage distractions? Managing distractions can be achieved by identifying and eliminating common distractions, using apps to limit screen time, creating a dedicated workspace, and setting boundaries with others. What is the two-minute rule? 
The two-minute rule states that if a task takes less than two minutes to complete, do it immediately. This helps build momentum and prevent small tasks from piling up. Why is reflection important in time management? Reflection helps you review your progress, identify what's working and what's not, and make necessary adjustments to improve your time management strategies. How can delegation improve time management? Delegation improves time management by allowing you to assign tasks to others, freeing up your time to focus on higher priority activities that require your specific skills. What tools can help with time management? Tools like Trello, Asana, Google Calendar, and physical planners can help organize tasks, manage projects, and schedule activities effectively. How do you maintain work-life balance while managing time? Maintaining work-life balance can be achieved by setting clear boundaries between work and personal time, scheduling downtime, and ensuring you engage in activities that help you relax and recharge. How does mindfulness contribute to time management? Mindfulness contributes by improving focus, reducing stress, and helping you stay present and engaged with your tasks, leading to better productivity. What is the importance of setting boundaries in time management? Setting boundaries helps prevent overcommitment, protects your personal time, and ensures you have time for rest and relaxation, which are crucial for maintaining productivity and well-being. How do you prioritize tasks effectively? Prioritizing tasks can be done by identifying the most important and urgent tasks, using the Eisenhower matrix, and focusing on high-impact activities that align with your goals. What is the Eisenhower matrix? The Eisenhower Matrix is a time management tool that helps prioritize tasks by categorizing them into four quadrants, urgent and important, important but not urgent, urgent but not important, and neither urgent nor important. How can you stay motivated and avoid burnout? Staying motivated and avoiding burnout can be achieved by setting realistic goals taking regular breaks, practicing self-care, celebrating small wins, and maintaining a balance between work and personal life. Thank you, Alice, and thanks to everyone for listening. We'll catch you in the next episode. Until then, take care and manage your time wisely. Take care, everyone.